Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm fishing today at Barford, which is on the Warwickshire Raven, and we're fishing the section above the weir. As you can see, this section's quite deep and slow, and it lends itself perfectly to fishing long pole over ground bait. So I think the first thing I'll do is explain a bit about the ground bait and how I'm going to feed the swim. Well, conditions are quite tough today. It's quite bright and sunny, and Chappie set me a target of five pound. So with that in mind, I'm going to fish quite a, a negative way in terms of how I'm going to feed the ground bait. The ground bait I'm using is Maruku Fine Lake and Fine Roach, and I've mixed it in equal parts, 50-50. I haven't added any soil, um, and the reason I like this ground bait is it's quite sticky, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But Another way of fishing today might have been to ball it in with a bigger quantity of ground bait, create a big disturbance and try and attract the fish. And in that case, I probably would have put about 50% soil in to reduce the feed content. But I've decided I'm going to keep things tight today. I don't know how it's going to fish and I'm going to cut my ground bait in. So I prepared the ground bait well in advance of the session, kept it in a sealed bag. And one thing I did when I got here was I added some more water and I'll run it through a, a ground bait riddle and then a finer maggot riddle to try and get all the lumps out and make the mix as fluffy as possible. So I mentioned the mix is quite sticky and for me that's a great advantage when I'm fishing ground bait like this because I can feed different types of balls in terms of how they're going to break down by adjusting how firmly I squeeze them. I'm going to mix up some ground bait now with the loose feed and I'm not going to put a lot of loose feed in, I'm just going to put maybe half a handful of casters in and just a smattering of live pinkies. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make up the balls about the size that I can grab with one hand. So I'm going to be cupping them in so I can't really put massive balls in and I'm just going to Squeeze the first balls quite tight. So that's three balls there that I've mixed and I've really squeezed quite hard. The intention being that they're going to take longer to break up. And then the next balls, I'm just going to gently squeeze. And I spent a good amount of time plumbing up the swim and I've identified that I'm going to actually feed two different spots. I'm going to feed a spot at 14 and a half metres and I'm going to feed a spot around about 10 and a half metres. And my thinking there is I want to feed two lines so I can rest one line and the longer line I'm going to put all these balls in so I've got six balls there and then on my shorter line, I'm going to just put three smaller balls in. So it's giving me an option of two different feeding patterns. So first thing I'm going to do now is put those six balls in at 14 and a half meters. And then we'll talk about the shorter line. Okay, so I'm going to feed those six balls on my 14 and a half meter line. And I'm going to cut them in just slightly downstream. So not straight in front of me, just fractionally downstream. So that will help me present my float over the top. And I'm going to obviously be careful to make a point of exactly where I'm shipping the balls. So I'm going to line them up with a marker on the far bank. So when I come to fish, I can fish exactly on the spot where I've cut the balls in. So that's the first one. So 
takes a bit of practice being able to cut balls out like this. You've got to be as smooth as possible because obviously you don't want the ball to drop out before you get it into position. And I've put the first two exactly in the same spot, but the next two I'm going to put fractionally further downstream just so that I could almost got like a line of ground bait to run my rig over. It seems like a bit of a hassle feeding like this, but it's just a perfect method when you're perhaps fishing in hard conditions like we are today, and you can absolutely maximize what you're gonna catch from the peg, certainly to start with. It's a great method to start with when you're both pleasure fishing and match fishing. And of course, as the day progresses or as the match progresses, you can start to bring other lines into play like a chop worm line or maybe by loose feeding over the top with hemp or casters. But it's a method we use a lot on the rivers. So that's the fifth ball and I've just gone another, perhaps it's just another 50 centimetres further downstream. But obviously I'm fishing the same distance out. And now the last one, and I'm going to drop that in the same hole. There we go. So that's the feed on the long line. We'll now put a bit of bait in on the shorter line and talk about that one. So a good tip when you're fishing in the summer in conditions like this when it's very hot and dry. So I like to keep my mixed ground bait in a plastic bag like that to keep it out of the sun. And I'm just going to take three handfuls of ground bait, which is what I'm going to feed on that shorter line. Just give that a bit of a mix so that it's really nice and fluffy before I make the balls. And I'm just going to add pinkies into this mix. If I was fishing a match, I'd probably have a few dead pinkies as well. But I haven't got any today, so we'll just put some live ones in. Obviously, they'll help to break up the balls quite quickly. And it's the inside line that I'm going to start on. So I've mixed two of those quite firm and one that's not mixed so hard to get Monty out of the way. And these balls on this 11 meter line, I'm going to feed downstream because I want to keep the two lines separate. And um, it's actually quite an interesting peg. When I plumbed up, it shelves off really quickly. And the bottom of the shell is around about 10 and a half meters where I'm going to cut this ball now. So again, I'm lining that with the far bank marker. I know that ball's going to drop right at the bottom of the ledge. And that was my thinking for fishing at 14 and a half metres on the long line, was I wanted to keep the two lines apart. And what I think I'm going to do on the shorter line is I'm going to loose feed pinkies over the top. Whereas on the long line, I'm going to lose feed casters, so again, it's giving us an option of two different ways to feed the peg and perhaps catch two different stamps of fish. All right then, so that's the last ball. So hopefully by feeding slightly downstream on the inside line, 
I'm not going to disturb it by bringing fish through it from the longer line. So when I plumbed up, I was obviously careful to mark the depths on my top kits. And you can see that there's not much difference between the 14 and a half meter and the 10 and a half, 11 meter line. It's probably only about 10 or 12 inches. So that means I can use the same rig. So I've just shallowed my rig off and I'm going to start on that inside line. I didn't catch much on the close in line, but I've started to get a few fish on the longer line and that was a nice roach that was taken by pike. So it proves that there's some fish there anyway. I had a run of small roach and perch and I just took a bed of fish. I'm not sure what it is, but it might be a decent perch. I'm not fishing that heavy, so I'll just take my time and try and get it out. Yeah, it's a perch.
It's not a monster, but that's going to help me towards my five pound weight, that's for sure. Let's see, he's got to be eight or ten ounces. Oh, I just started off on a 25 match to 07, so I had to take my time, but that'd be a nice bonus if that was the start of a match. Well, it feels like another decent perch. It's been an interesting session so far. I'm catching out at 14 and a half meters and I'm getting a mixture of different size roach and two or three better perch. And uh, I'm loose feeding casters over the top. So I don't know if that's helped to attract some of these better perch into the swim. But obviously I put some casters in my uh, balls of ground bait as well. So it's working well really just to try and catch a mixed bag of fish and build up a weight. Well, there we go. Another perch about six or eight ounces. So I'm building nicely towards Chappie's target of five pound. Well, as we mentioned at the start of the video, this style of fishing is just a great way of sort of maximizing what you can from the swim. Particularly when you're fishing in the middle of the day like we are today in bright conditions with clear water. I think if you fished conventionally like perhaps with a waggler or a feeder, you, you might be struggling to get a, a bite at all. So by fishing in this way with a long pole and ground bait, you can really concentrate the fish in one area and hopefully pick them up and build up a respectable weight. But it's obviously a method that's more suited to match fishing when you're forced to fish in the worst time of the day. And it's also important to, to sort of really take it easy and build the peg up. So I didn't go mad with that initial feed. And the loose feed that we're putting in is just in response to the fish that we're catching. So I'm sure that if I perhaps started loose feeding lots of bait, I'd overfeed the fish very quickly and end up struggling to catch anything. Well, the rigs I've set up to tackle this swim today I've actually set three different ones up. I've got um, a gram and a 0.8 of a gram, and they're rigged up with an olivette. So they're designed to get the bait down quite quickly and present the bait in the sort of bottom foot of water. And then I've also set a 0.4 rig up with style rigs to fish up in the water. But certainly when you start on the ground bait, you obviously want to be fishing near the bottom where the ground bait's settled and breaking up and hopefully that's where the fish are and that's exactly what's happening. I'm catching all these fish directly over where I cut that ground bait. I've got an olivet that's around about a foot from the hook and I've got three number 10 shot below it. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting the float in position above where I cut the ground bait, letting everything settle and then I'm just running the float over the top of the ground bait. And because it's so deep here, and the river's so low, there's hardly any flow. And what I found today is the, the 0.8 float is actually just picking up the flow that bit better. And I'm definitely getting more bites on the slightly lighter bolt rig. But obviously, as the session progresses, you've got to be flexible and adapt. So I can shallow up with these bolt rigs. And there's a bite, and that was right over the ground bait. I don't think it's a big fish, it's probably another one of those small roach. Um, so you can shallow up with the bolt rig. And then we've also got the chance to fish right up in the water with the, on the drop rig. But okay, that's not a monster roach, but it's perhaps two ounces. And that's just a great weight builder when you're fishing a match on a venue like this. So basically these kind of tactics uh, have sort of developed really to catch what you can from the swim. And, develop the peg as the match or the session progresses. So you're not probably going to catch massive weights fishing like this, but it's a very, very reliable way of fishing. And one, particularly when you're fishing in team matches, will pretty much guarantee good points.
Well, the swim's just slowed up a little bit. Started catching a few tiny dace and smaller fish, so I'm going to top up. Um, I'm using the same mix as what I put in to start with. I've just riddled it to really sort of freshen it up and get all the lumps out of it. And all I'm going to do is just add a few casters and I'm going to make two balls. I'll just show you. I'm going to be quite brave and put some decent sized balls in. I'm actually going to use a trick that I'm going to put some live pinkies in the middle of the ball by making a hole with my thumb and then just covering it over with another piece of ground bait. So I'm going to put two of those back in exactly where I fed the others and we'll see if we can get some better fish feeding again. I suppose I've been fishing for about two hours, so the fact I haven't had to top up till now is quite good, really. So it always pays to be a bit careful. If I was fishing a match, I'd probably only top up with one ball, but as we're effectively pleasure fishing today, I'm going to put two in and hopefully be a bit braver. The second one, I'm not going to squeeze quite as hard as the first one. We'll see if that does the trick. When I'm fishing long pole over ground bait like this, uh, my go-to elastic reel is a, a number five, and that's a Preston Blue number five. Main line is 012. I feel that's robust enough to give me the chance of increasing the hook length and hook size on a good day, but also gives me enough finesse when I need to fish finer. Um, the float pattern I'm using is a, a pattern called a Census Letitia, and it's the kind of slightly elongated rugby ball shape um, which is just great for fishing on rivers because it gives you some control so you can present the bait perfectly when you're fishing over the top of the ground bait. The, you can see it's a wire stem and it's quite a, a decent diameter wire stem so that really helps make the float very stable and I think it helps me gain control over it when I'm running the float through the swim. And just something to mention about the Letitia's, a really key feature for me that I really like, is they're supplied with two tips. So there's a standard sort of fibre tip, and you get another tip, a hollow tip, which pushes over the top. And I really like that because I've got a, a number of different tips, so I can change the colour if conditions change, and I can also change the diameter. So when I'm fishing hard, conditions with smaller baits I like to use the thinner tip if I step up in size to a bigger bait then I'll put on the uh, the thicker tip hook wise today I've switched between uh, a 20 and an 18 drone and fine match so to start with when I was fishing single pinky double pinky single maggot I was using a 20 and I was matching that to a 0 0.07 millimeter hook length, which I suppose is like 12 ounce in old money. And to get through those smaller days um, towards the end of the session, I've switched over to an 18 fine match to 08. And I've been using double maggot or double pinky on that. And that's worked really well for those bonus perch. So I think I showed the actual rig in a bit of detail during the video, but there you can see I've got an Olivet. This is on my one gram rig, so that's a 0.8 Olivet. I've trapped it with two number, time, two number nine shot, and then I've got four number tens down. And I've actually only got three number tens in position at the moment. I've got a spare one there if I need to bring that down into play. So there you go. It's fair to say that that's quite a simple rig. Obviously we talked about adjusting the position of the bulk and the shots below it and also the depth, but fundamentally when you're fishing over ground bait like we are today, 
you want to get the bait down and present it well and run it over the top of the ground bait. So there's no need for fancy rigs where you're fishing up in the water. So I'll just show you the, the hook baits. On the 20 hook, I've been using a single fluoro pinky. That's been the best bet, or the best bait rather. So you can see I've hooked that in the conventional way. And on the ground rig, I use the 18 hook. I'll just clean this off. And uh, I was using a double red maggot and that definitely got me a run of better perch. And in this case, I was just hooking them very gently and lightly through the tail. You can see these are beautiful, big, large red maggots. And I don't suppose, a, I mean, a perch is gonna find it hard to resist that. So that was a great bait today. A great tip and advantage of these half extensions, when you're fishing like this and you're fishing two different lengths, I really like to use them because mainly you're protecting your, your, your main pole. Obviously these half extensions are so robust and strong, you can rest your elbow on it and not worry about damaging the, the sections, particularly when you're fishing with the shorter sections, when you're fishing closer in like this. And we've designed these half extensions to be reversible. So this one goes on the eight and seven, and we have another one that goes on the six and five. That's a small roach on the inside line. I've, throughout the day, as the sessions progressed, I've just been loose feeding pinkies on that line. And although it hasn't been the main line of attack today, because we've caught well further out on 14 and a half on another day, this closer line can be absolutely devastating because obviously being closer, you can catch the fish a hell of a lot quicker. Yeah. We'll give it another go and see if we can get a better stamp fish before we go back out to 14 and a half meters. I think I mentioned at the start that I'm using the same rig on the closer line and that's really helped by the fact that this peg has got a very similar depth between the two different lines. So I only have to make a small adjustment to fish closer in. And obviously in a match situation, that's another great advantage because it saves a lot of time. The difference between the two lines today that's instantly obvious is that that closer in line is completely slack. There's no flow at all. And that may be why we didn't catch to start with and why perhaps we're catching a smaller stamp of fish there. It's almost like the better roach and perch are feeding out where there is just that bit more flow out at 14 and a half meters. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll go back out to that long line and see if we can get some better stamp fish. I was just getting a period where I was getting pestered by small dace. So I thought I'd switch up to an 18 hook and try double maggot and had another better perch. So I reckon I must be dangerously close to Chappie's five pound target. Well, I'm not really sure what my reward from Chappie is if I hit this five pound target. Might be something nice like a pork pie or He's feeling a bit tight. Sometimes I get a Werther's original. But who knows, it might even be just bus fare home. We'll have to wait and see.
yeah. You ready? Well, that wasn't quite how I wanted to end the session, but I finally got that pesky pike. I've had him on probably five or six times today. I don't know if it's the same pike, but anyway, it took another roach, and uh, whether the roach has come off and the, the hook's transferred into the fish's mouth, I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> it's not a big pike, but it's only about a pound or two pound. Your little trickster, you really made my day tough today. Anyway, you can see he's hooked just in the in the jaw, so he didn't get away that time. Well, we're coming towards the end of the session now, and in summary, the long 14 and a half metre line has been by far the best line. I've only really caught um, small roach and dace on the inside line, perhaps just due to the fact that the main flow was so far out today and that's where the better fish were. But it really does show what an efficient and effective method fishing the long pole over ground bait can be. Especially when you're fishing on a hard day like this in tough conditions, you really can maximise the potential from your peg. So, I think it was going to be really interesting to see if I've hit that magical five pound target that Chap has given me. So I think I'm going to have a couple more casts and then we'll have a weigh in and have a look. Well then Chappie, go on. Have I done it? Have I hit my five pound target? Yes, James, I think you've done it. <laughs> what do you reckon? I've got, I've got, there's got to be six or seven pound there. Yeah, easy mate. Really, really well done. Well fished, sir. And here is your reward. Fantastic. Thanks, mate. Thanks for Barford AA for letting us fish here today. And thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>